morning's Bible reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. This is the New International Version. Can you hear me now? <laughs> the people waiting, walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will become fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God. We blink and Advent is here again. Advent, the four weeks leading up to Christmas, a time of preparation and waiting. As one of my colleagues said, together we await the birth of a child who will teach us again how to have hope, work for peace, seek out joy, and dare to love in a world that makes all of these things feel impossible at times. The world waits together. There are signs of this preparation all around. There are lights going up and trees are being trimmed and the music of the season is playing. It's hard to escape the songs of Christmas. Every, everywhere you go, Christmas music is playing. I was at the doctor's office this week and there was music at the grocery store, at the mall, especially at the mall, even at the auto repair shop. Deck the halls and Mary Did You Know and Joy to the World seem to play on an endless loop over and over and over again. But there are other songs of Christmas and so for the next four weeks, we're going to take a look at these songs. The song of Isaiah and of Zechariah, the shepherds and Mary. And we will see how they invite us into hope and into peace and into joy and into love once again. Let us pray. For the hope of the season, we give thanks for the invitation to pay attention in new ways. We give thanks. Open us to your hope once again. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful. Sometimes life is hard and challenging and it is hard to be hopeful. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful because every time you take a step forward, something happens that puts you three steps back. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful because you've received news that doesn't leave much room for hope. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful because experience has taught you that life isn't hopeful. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful because every time you open the paper or scroll through your news feeds, 
There are more stories of destruction and violence and injustice and cruelty. Sometimes it's hard to be hopeful because we cannot imagine that things can get better. Last year, about this time, I was finding it a challenge to be hopeful. It was a hard year for our family. We had experienced many deaths that were unexpected. A job my husband had had for 25 years ended abruptly. A neighbor lost their college-aged son to suicide. The stress and uncertainty of COVID was weighing on us, and at the last minute, we had to cancel plans to be with family for Christmas. The darkness that Isaiah describes was palpable. I am sure you have also experienced that kind of darkness when hope is hard to cling to, when it is really challenging to imagine that things could get better. In the midst of this hopelessness, I remember looking for signs for, of anything that was remotely encouraging or life-giving. We yearn for signs that something better is on the way. We want to see some glimmer of light in the dark night. We want to believe that change is possible, that something will break into our limited vision and reignite our imagination. The prophet Isaiah gets that yearning. Life was not great for his community. They were living under foreign oppression and they were facing a national tragedy and they were living in the midst of war where there were casualties all around. All was not well. It was hard to be hopeful. It was hard to imagine that things could be different. And Isaiah is bold enough to offer this impossibly hopeful vision to his people. Endless peace, justice with righteousness, audacious. Isaiah is confident in his song. Life will be better. Help is on the way. A new king is coming. The people who have walked in darkness, he says, have seen a great light. Joy has increased and the rod of oppression has been broken. Clothes of war will be burned and there will be endless peace with justice and righteousness, impossibly hopeful. 700 years later, the early Christian communities looked back on this text and it gave them words for their hope in Jesus. Isaiah wasn't speaking about Jesus, he was speaking of Hezekiah, a king who was a hopeful image for people at the time, but the hope was the same. And we too can hear the hope Isaiah sings for us. He gives us the gift of imagination, of dreaming what might be possible. We too dream of, the, of a world where oppression is gone, where joy is abundant and peace prevails. In Advent, we dare to believe that this might just be possible. We dare to have hope that the baby who is coming will change everything and that we can be a part of this change. My colleague Larry Peacock says, the one who is coming makes us crazy enough to sing in the midst of troubles, to hope in the midst of doubts, and to light candles in the midst of darkness. And with every candle that we light and with every song we sing and with every hopeful thought we have, we bear witness to the pregnant possibilities. In so many ways, the world tells us 
that what we experience in our daily lives is as good as it gets, that things won't get better, that violence is the answer, that people don't matter, that difference is something to fear, that my way is the right way, that some people are better than others, that greed is okay, that people are dispensable, and that the ends justify the means. But the song of hope Isaiah sings is, a new world is possible. And if we pay attention, there are others singing this song too and inviting us to come along. Who can forget the women of Iran this fall taking off their headscarves in protest of the lack of women's rights in Iran and the violence against women in that country? As one woman was brave enough to protest and take off her headscarf and to let her hair down, others caught the vision and joined in. They saw a glimmer of hope and had some imagination that something better was possible and they could be part of that change. We hear the song of hope in climate activists and scientists who tell us that while all not, not all is well, there are still things we can do to slow down climate change and reverse damage that we have done to our planet. They let us know that a different future is possible. Hope shows up when a relationship takes steps towards reconciliation or when we see ways to change destructive patterns in our families or when we finally see a way forward where there were only dead ends before. Hope shows up every week at this church in support groups like AA, support groups that meet in church basements all across our country, in the stories of others that tell us a different life is possible. In our own city, the song of hope rings as people join together to lift up awareness and demand answers to the disproportionate numbers of missing and murdered indigenous women in Canada. We believe a world where all are safe could become a reality. Hope comes in the conversations around our dinner tables or in a beautiful sunrise or in our children and grandchildren and their dreams for the future. And our hope is in God who is creating and who creates, who reconciles and makes new, who is with us even in the dark, dark days. Hope and imagination surround us and invite us to join in the song. Can we be the presence of love where there is no love? Can we be a listening ear or a presence when someone needs someone to sit with them? Can we dream together about what we want to change in the world? Can we join others and, and march for human rights? Can we speak up and offer a different perspectives when others tear down? Can we live into God's vision of wholeness for all of creation? Can we be the song of hope for others who face despair? If we pay attention, the invitations to join the song of hope are everywhere. Last fall, when the darkness was palpable all around me, one of our neighbors experienced the loss of their son, which I mentioned. As soon as the news of his death was made public, neighbors sprang into action. Within just a few hours, people in our community had signed up to provide meals for three straight months. I saw neighbors walking the family dog twice a day and others pitching in to fill gaps in carpools. I know phone calls were made, text messages sent, and many prayers were offered. On the night of the funeral, a neighbor sent out an email asking people to turn on all the lights they could in their homes. 
porch lights and Christmas lights and living room lights, all the lights, to make that dark night just a little bit brighter. My girls asked if we could go for a walk so we could go see the lights. We walked up and down all the streets in our neighborhood. It was one of the most profound nights as almost every single house shone brightly. Some of the people knew the young man, others didn't, it didn't matter. People dug their Christmas lights out of the basement they untangled them and hung them up in the trees. Neighbors lit lanterns lighting up the walkways. A few people even shaped hearts out of lights and hung them in their windows. The brightness transformed the night and the feeling of hope was palpable. The lights made the darkness a little brighter and a little more hopeful. In this season, despite the darkness surrounding us, we are invited to hope again. We are invited to imagine what could be again. We are invited to light candles and sing songs and to look for signs of hope. We are invited to be the hope in the world. A baby is coming, and as Isaiah sings, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. A new day is coming. The vision is before us. Light shines even in the darkness. Hope is born anew. May it be so for each of us in this season. Amen.